So, we looked at uh, the overviews of um, uh, the three important uh, welding processes that are uh, generally used in automotive industry. The first we looked at resistance spot welding uh, and then we moved on to uh, laser beam welding. And finally, we looked at some of the advances uh, that are uh, know, so far made in uh, gas metal arc welding, uh, which actually you know, um, makes this process very attractive for uh, uh, welding of some of the new generation uh, advanced resistance steels, uh, not only welding and also for basing applications. And uh, so, we will move on to the, uh, the welding metallurgy, the third chapter, uh, how these uh, welding processes affect the carefully designed uh, uh, microstructures of advanced resistance steels. Uh, and we will also look at uh, the, um, the effect of alloying elements that we add and uh, what are the uh, uh, behaviors of these alloying elements when uh, we apply belt thermal cycle. So, uh, in, in previous uh, lectures, I talked about uh, the microstructure of advanced ice and seals and how we stabilize this microstructure by, uh, by applying a complex uh, heat treatment uh, and adding uh, the alloying elements which are not uh, generally present in the uh, amount we add in the advanced ice and seal in conventional steels. Trip steel microstructure, uh, uh, base material microstructure is given in this slide. So, as we have seen uh, um, uh, that you know, trip steel contains uh, typically uh, three phases, uh, 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 ferrite uh, or you can say uh, magnetic ferrite and then uh, some amount of retained austenite. So, generally this retained austenite uh, you know, uh, gives the, the, uh, the superior properties of the strip steel uh, uh, when this retained austenite transforms to martensite upon loading, you get enhanced plasticity as well as the increasing strength. Uh, and of course, these, these alloys, uh, trip steel also contains uh, the increased amount of manganese uh, as well as uh, silicon aluminum. Uh, they also give uh, solid solution strengthening. Um, so, now we will see how uh, a weld uh, a micro, a thermal cycle and affect this microstructure. Uh, what are the uh, uh, behaviors of uh, the alloying elements uh, during uh, uh, welding? So, as I explained uh, in the previous uh, lectures, the trip steel uh, contains uh, the alloying elements uh, of uh, you know, higher amount of either aluminum or silicon or some amount of phosphorus apart from uh, the carbon and manganese. Uh, so, generally trip steels uh, can be classified into uh, uh, two important grades uh, the in conventional trip steels. So, one is the, the aluminum based trip, the other one is the silicon based um, uh, trip steel. Uh, in um, aluminum based trip steel, we stabilize uh, uh, retained austenite by adding aluminum. Uh, aluminum uh, in the range of not more than uh, 1.2, there is a, a metallurgical reason why we will not add more than 1.2, that will come to, uh, that will we will discuss later, but then typically it is about 1 percent aluminum. Okay. Apart from aluminum, uh, we also have uh, about 0 0.2 percent carbon. Um, and uh, manganese of 1.5 to uh, say not more than 1.8 um, in a conventional trip steel. Uh, and uh, we reduce uh, uh, silicon uh, in uh, aluminum steel, uh, silicon is in conventional uh, level uh, in uh, 0 0.3 to 0 0.4. Um, and uh, the phosphorus uh, it is kept as an, an, an level uh, which is actually uh, considered uh, uh, as a safe uh, in, uh, in weld, uh, safe to weld. In uh, silicon based strip steels, uh, we uh, replace aluminum with silicon. Uh, the silicon uh, in, uh, generally is added uh, in, in around 1.5 8 percent uh, and uh, generally the carbon and manganese uh, uh, remain the same. So, there are uh, uh, positives and negative uh, uh, in terms of metallurgical uh, aspects uh, by adding either aluminum or silicon. Uh, uh, silicon uh, based strip steels are conventionally developed uh, and then uh, uh, the, 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 the commercialization was also started uh, by silicon based strip steels, but um, there were issues uh, uh, with uh, the addition of silicon uh, because uh, you know silicon forms uh, surface oxides. Uh, so, the, uh, the galvanizability the, uh, uh, became you know, uh, 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 improper and uh, there, there was a severe effect of uh, the silicon oxide formation, surface oxide formation and the adherence of uh, zinc coating onto the surface. Uh, because of that, you know, um, the addition of silicon was not uh, seen as a good alternative uh, to uh, generate trip steel. Uh, so, uh, the, the, there was some uh, uh, work to replace uh, silicon with uh, some other alloying element um, and uh, the one of the uh, development was to uh, replace silicon uh, with aluminum and therefore, the aluminum based strip steel were also you know, came into picture. Uh, so, aluminum is also you know, effective uh, as I already explained uh, in suppressing cementate formation, uh, but al aluminum is uh, very poor uh, solid solution strengthener. 
compared to silicon. Uh, so, silicon is a very effective solid solution uh, strengthener in ferrite, whereas aluminum uh, solid solution strengthening uh, is not that effective compared to silicon. Uh, so, uh, the yeah, uh, naturally, you know, uh, uh, the amount of uh, uh, aluminum is added is sufficient for stabilizing it in austenite, but strength cannot be achieved uh, to on higher levels uh, as compared with the silicon based strip steel. So, uh, the, uh, uh, the, uh, the increased amount of phosphorus uh, is also added in aluminum based strip steel to compensate the strength, the solid solution strength uh, loss uh, by the addition of aluminum. Uh, and we will see the effect of each individual alloying elements uh, during welding uh, in uh, subsequent uh, slides, uh, subsequent uh, lectures. Uh, so, right now we can assume that you know the, we can make uh, uh, trip steel uh, with uh, two different uh, uh, composition ranges. So, one is aluminum based trip steel uh, and the other one is silicon based trip steel. Uh, and, and aluminum based trip steel we stabilize retained austenite by uh, adding uh, about 1 percent of aluminum and, uh, and silicon based trip steel we add uh, about 1.5 percent um, of silicon. Uh, to uh, stabilize retained austenite in uh, both steels. So, in, uh, even though these steels chemistries are uh, entirely different apart from common manganese you see the, the amount of silicon and, uh, and aluminum percent uh, in these two steels are uh, slightly different. Uh, what you have uh, it is in both the cases uh, similar uh, where we have uh, ferrite uh, and carbide free bainite or uh, bainitic ferrite and retained austenite uh, which is varying from say 10 to 12 percent of retained austenite, uh, not more than uh, 15 percent because the microstructure what you generate is, uh, is more or less similar. But when you see look at uh, the, uh, the phase diagrams of these two steels and, uh, uh, and, and you see an, uh, two different uh, uh, entirely uh, two different phase diagrams. For example, uh, uh, the left side of the slide you see in, in an, an aluminum based strip steel uh, and uh, right side you have a silicon based strip steel. Uh, so, uh, if you look at uh, the aluminum uh, based strip steel phase diagrams, uh, the, so these are all uh, uh, the quasi binary phase diagrams. So, where you, we plot an ion carbon uh, diagram uh, with an influence of the other alloying elements. And if you look at uh, by adding 1.1 percent uh, aluminum, so uh, the aluminum being in a very a very strong ferritic stabilizer, ferrite stabilizer and we, we enlarge the uh, uh, delta ferrite lobe over here and then uh, now when you have uh, an higher amount of aluminum your ferrite is delta ferrite is stabilized to much lower temperature because the aluminum is very strong the alpha stabilizer. And uh, uh, this can have a significant influence on the weld microstructure because uh, when you have a solidification uh, from the liquid uh, weld pool uh, uh, to uh, lower temperatures and because of the partitioning of aluminum uh, it can uh, lead to an uh, stabilization of delta ferrite and that can happen uh, uh, in, in a weld metal. Uh, but as in uh, compared to aluminum based strip steel, silicon based strip steel show the conventional uh, um, the ion carbon phase diagram even though we add uh, the 1.5 percent of um, uh, silicon and uh, manganese and uh, uh, the other alloying elements, uh, the phase diagram looks uh, an, an, uh, more or less uh, the, the at least the phase fields look similar to in a conventional ion carbon diagram because yeah silicon is not that effective uh, uh, in, uh, in promoting any phase uh, uh, in, in when it is in a very low amount whereas in aluminum can have a significant effect of uh, enlarging the, uh, the delta ferrite uh, and austenite lobe uh, what is called it intercritical lobe. So, even though the mechanical properties the microstructure may uh, appear uh, similar. Uh, in terms of uh, the, the uh, microstructure evolution and these two steels uh, when it when they you know when they cooled uh, continuously from the uh, the melting point and you may expect a uh, different stabilization uh, uh, the microstructure stabilization microstructure evolution mechanism can be entirely different in these two steels because of the change in uh, uh, the phase fields in the in the phase diagram what you see over here in this slide. So, we will have to now see uh, an individual cases and if you apply a, a typical weather thermal cycle and uh, how uh, the microstructure evolution takes place uh, even though your base microstructure may appear similar. Uh, the, the weld microstructure can entirely be different uh, based on uh, its individual uh, um, uh, composition. So, 
So, so what does welding do to uh, uh, in, 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 in a steel or uh, for that matter is it's any uh, material. So, so the, the if you look at a uh, macroscopic effect the weld if you look at it and then uh, so you would see uh, two distinctive effects. So, one is uh, so when you do weld and you also have an um, uh, uh, anisotropic uh, thermal expansion. Uh, because you have a varying amount of uh, phases. In this case, we have a trip steel, for example, you have three phases ferrite and uh, carbide free bionite and it and osnide, and uh, the thermal expansion of these three phases can be different entirely. Uh, and uh, uh, when you have a base microstructure, uh, uh, when you are heating up to higher temperature, and each phase can expand and contract uh, when you are doing heating and cooling uh, uh, entirely differently. So, you may have a homogeneous strain development uh, when you uh, apply a, a well thermal cycle. Um, and apart from that you also have the strains uh, that are evolving due to the phase transformations. Uh, so, these are all added together and then can lead to uh, yeah, the uh, severe um, uh, residual, residual stress development in and around the weld. So, the first effect you see in the macroscopically uh, is the, the evolution of residual stress and this stress can lead to uh, 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 distortion of the, uh, the plates. So, we are not going to uh, 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 in detail into the uh, residual stress evolution and the distortion. Uh, um, so, we can assume that you know uh, 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 when you are welding and uh, because of inhomogeneous um, strain development uh, in various levels, mainly in three levels um, uh, in, in, uh, in a macroscopic level and in a phase level, uh, in a grain level as well as in, uh, uh, in, in, in the crystal level. So, you may expect uh, in a strain development and this uh, strain can lead to uh, uh, distortion. Um, and uh, apart from the macroscopic strain effect, of course, you also have a temperature effect. So, when you, when you apply in a well thermal cycle and uh, in and around uh, the well regions, uh, the regions are also heated up to various peak temperatures and uh, they, they are heated up to uh, uh, melting point. Uh, for example, if you have uh, a plate, it is a welded plate, so we have an, uh, the weld at the middle. So, a bead on plate weld is made with GMAW in this case. And uh, so, you have a well center line. So, well center line is over here. So, so the, the well regions, so the temperature reached is much higher than the, the melting point. So, you have you form a uh, molten pool and if you move away from the well center line, your peak temperature decreases uh, um, as a function of distance from the well center line. Uh, so, the peak temperature reached uh, in and around uh, the, uh, the fusion boundary uh, will be close to melting point, will be less than the melting point at the fusion boundary and when you move away from the fusion boundary, the temperature uh, decreases significantly. So, uh, if you look at uh, the peak temperature you know, based on uh, from the phase diagram, you can look at it. So, when the temperature reached uh, above the A3 line, we call uh, the lectures, uh, my lectures on the, the phase diagram. So, when the temperature reaches above uh, the A3 temperatures, so you have a complete oxidization and then uh, the, uh, the heating and cooling rate would dictate the amount of austenite formed. Suppose, if you have uh, a temperature reached much higher even if with a very fast heating rate, uh, so you may have a fully austenitic microstructure and subsequently you, you can cool it back uh, to fully mortogenic microstructure. Uh, so, if you move away obviously, the temperature uh, 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 peak temperature reached it is also uh, um, uh, can also fall in between uh, uh, the intercritical annealing regions. So, where uh, you have uh, regions in heat affected zone say for example, somewhere over here and you may also have a temperature reach to an intercritical uh, um, temperatures uh, and you may also have a intercritical annealing treatment uh, for example. And uh, when you have a temperature reached below A1 temperature where uh, you, know, you may not see any uh, the phase transformations, but th there could be some other effects. Uh, um, for example, if you have martensitic microstructure, uh, say in a dual phase steel, you may also temper uh, the martensite you know, and the when the temperature reached, uh, uh, when the temperature reaches uh, below the A1 temperature. Uh, and in, in a trip steel and you may also have some effect in retained austenite because retained austenite is not stable uh, when you heat it up to higher temperatures. Okay? So, we will see in that effect. Uh, so, uh, based on the welding process, the heating and cooling rate can also change. Uh, so, typically say if you look at uh, the various regions, uh, so now if you look at uh, uh, time temperature graph, say for example, uh, uh, region somewhere uh, over here where the peak temperature reached uh, say uh, about uh, 1500 Kelvin, somewhere around uh, say 1200 degree centigrade. 
So, the peak temperature so if reach to 200 degree centigrade at this point, so you will have a heating to 200 degree centigrade and subsequently so cool to room temperature. So, so say for example about 1200 degree centigrade. Uh, if you move away from the well center line, this is somewhere over here. So the peak temperature may be reached to say 1000 degree centigrade. So then uh, you will have uh, curves something like that at that point. And similarly, if you move away uh, elsewhere, so you may also go to the intercritical region uh, where the temperature can go up to say 800 degree centigrade. And so where a peak temperature reached, uh, say this will be 1000 if you say and if this will be say 800 degree centigrade where you will have intercritical regions. And if you move further away, so further away the temperature may reach uh, say 600 degree centigrade and you will have a thermal cycle developed. at this point in this manner. So the heating and cooling rate is determined by uh, your uh, the material thickness and the heat transfer of your material, your uh, uh, the local conditions as well as the, uh, the heat source characteristics. So generally if you have uh, uh, the material thickness uh, for a given material thickness, um, uh, the uh, uh, resistance pot welding gives the maximum uh, heating and cooling uh, rates. Uh, where the heating and cooling rates can go in RSW the order of uh, 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 1000 uh, centigrade per second uh, whereas in laser beam welding so you can go up to a few hundreds of uh, uh, yeah, somewhere between say, say 500 to 1000. Uh, So, whereas in GTAW the, uh, or GMAW, the cooling rates can be controlled in the order of uh, 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 say 100 kilin per second and the heating and cooling rate can be controlled uh, uh, in the order of uh, 100 kilin per second. So, if you look at it in uh, RSW, the resistance pot welding gives the maximum heating and cooling rate as well as the temperature gradients is the, the, uh, the very steep in RSW uh, and then subsequently in uh, GMAW welding. So imagine now you know if you are heating up in, in 1000 kilin per second rapidly to an oscillation temperature and cool back and you can expect a uh, severe heterogeneity in terms of uh, microstructural development at various regions and, and the cooling rates uh, uh, will dictate uh, 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 that you know when you have fully oscillatic microstructure you will end up getting a metastatic microstructure. Um, and similarly, you know, the, when the temperature reach to intercritical region and uh, you, you will not form a, a fully austenitic microstructure, uh, you will have uh, uh, the two phase microstructure wherein uh, uh, your austenite can also be enriched in carbon similar to what we looked at when we looked at the intercritical annealing treatment. Uh, and based on the temperatures uh, reached, uh, you may also have an, uh, uh, an gradient in the enrichment in of austenite. For example, regions uh, reached. Uh, where the temperature reached to uh, just below an AC uh, um, A3, uh, then you may have uh, uh, the maximum amount of austenite. So, you may, uh, you may not enrich the austenite significantly whereas in the regions uh, uh, just above the uh, AC3, uh, AC1 uh, and you may have a, a highly enriched austenite and again so there will be an uh, interplay between the temperature as well as the partitioning and uh, the amount of austenite you form and uh, can lead to an uh, uh, increased amount of retained austenite stabilization when the peak temperature reached uh, uh, to an intercritical annealing temperature during welding. Uh, of course, when the, when the temperature reached to fully austenitic region and you, you have uh, um, uh, the fully austenitic microstructure where uh, uh, so you will not have uh, an, uh, a benefit of uh, carbon partitioning when the temperature reached to intercritical annealing temperature. So, uh, from this uh, uh, in the complex thermal cycle uh, you expect uh, during welding and you may also expect an, uh, an, a very complex microstructure that are generated after welding. So, uh, whatever microstructure we have in the base material, uh, a, a beautiful uh, 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 microstructure generated from the complex thermomechanical treatment as well as uh, uh, the adding alloying elements, now uh, weld it has its own uh, thermal cycle. Okay, so, so when you are uh, um, applying a such a well thermal cycle, so you, you may expect an, an, a, a very heterogeneous microstructure generated after welding. 
So, now we will have to understand uh, from the metallurgical point of view how this well thermal cycle uh, is going to um, uh, influence uh, the uh, microstructure evolution um, um, and uh, from this understanding and we can also uh, uh, mitigate uh, this well thermal cycle uh, in, uh, in last chapter we are going to look at how um, uh, we can engineer these thermal cycles uh, so that you know we can minimize the damage that the well thermal cycle does uh, to the, uh, the carefully designed microstructure. So, this is an overview of a weld made using a GTAW, a gas tungsten arc welding or variant. So, we just applied a simple weld thermal cycle and then if you look at the weld zone, so this is the fusion boundary. So, what you see over here? And if you look at the microstructure of say this is a silicon based strip steel. Um, after uh, an, an GTA weld, it's a simple uh, bead on plate weld, uh, you see an, a columnar uh, solidification and you also see in the center line uh, equiax grinds, but grind mode is not visible, but uh, so the, it becomes equiaxed. And then you also see these black dots uh, that are actually uh, inclusions uh, of uh, non metallics. Okay. And you also see uh, the uh, heat affected zone, you see uh, uh, the coarse grain heat affect zone, this is completely uh, martensite silic microstructure where uh, the temperature reached here is uh, uh, yeah, fully austenitic uh, 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 and then subsequently when you cool it and then it becomes fully martensitic. And well zone is if you look at it in a closely uh, in a, uh, slightly higher magnifications in the same steel in high silicon uh, weld. Uh, you, you, see, you see this is the fusion boundary and the heat of the zone is fully martensitic and with the, uh, the grind boundaries are decorated again with the, the uh, non-metallic inclusions and uh, so this is again this is not an uh, ideal uh, weld condition when we made and this is show that you know when you use a conventional weld thermal cycle and you have a uh, 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 severe uh, uh, inclusion formation in high silicon steel weld. And uh, we will see uh, the two major effects uh, of a well thermal cycle here. Now, if you make a simple welding case, so you will have a formation of uh, the inclusions, these, and then a complete martensitic microstructure uh, with uh, when you have a grind boundary melting, and you may also have an inclusions that are formed along the grind boundaries in the coarse grained heat affected zone. And this is in a isolated steel case. Uh, when you have an um, so when in a high aluminium case and the weld uh, showing in uh, 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 the microstructure if you look at the high aluminium weld so what you see over here apart from the inclusion formation inclusions are non metallic inclusions in the the fusion zone so this is your fusion boundary and apart from the inclusion, you also see an, a distinct layer of uh, uh, underfusion boundary, a stabilization of uh, an, a, a face, and in this case, uh, uh, so this is uh, a delta ferrite. Okay, so recall the, the aluminium uh, iron carbon phase diagram with the influence of aluminium. So uh, when I was uh, showing the phase fields. And we, uh, we showed that uh, by addition of uh, say 1.1 percent weight percent of aluminium, uh, so your delta ferrite is also stabilized to much lower temperature. Uh, so, uh, so what we are seeing over here the effect of uh, addition of aluminium and aluminium can lead to uh, stabilization of uh, uh, delta ferrite in the fusion boundary because of the partitioning of aluminium uh, during solidification to the uh, solidifying delta ferrite. So, we will see uh, how uh, uh, this uh, happen, uh, the, the metallurgical uh, reasons behind this uh, um, stabilization. So, you need to see, uh, you, uh, you can understand from this microstructure uh, the, the effect of uh, alloying elements uh, very clearly. Uh, so, when you add higher amount of silicon to aluminum and uh, both aluminum and silicon are highly oxidizing. So, so uh, the aluminum readily forms oxides. Uh, and uh, these oxides uh, 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 are 
no, it can form at a very high temperatures, uh, above, uh, even over melting point. The moment you have uh, the oxide formation, you may also have an uh, enrichment of electrolyte elements uh, onto this oxide formation and can lead to uh, the formation of non-metallic inclusions. Uh, so, so, by increasing uh, the aluminum selenium concentration and which we are, um, which are needed to stabilize retained austenite, we may also uh, form uh, non-metallic inclusions invariably in the well zone. Uh, in uh, aluminum based strip steel, apart from uh, the uh, inclusion formation and we may also have uh, a uh, soft uh, uh, zone of um, delta ferrite that can be stabilized uh, in the fusion boundary. Okay? Uh, so, we will see in detail about the mechanism of inclusion formation and the, uh, the aluminum partitioning, aluminum behavior of uh, aluminum partitioning uh, uh, in subsequent classes uh, and then uh, we will see uh, the, uh, the effect of uh, uh, the other aligning elements for example, phosphorus and uh, the boron uh, in advanced heights and steels, uh, how uh, the, the building microstructure can influence, can be influenced by the partitioning of these aligning elements. So, first we will begin with uh, the addition of uh, uh, silicon aluminum. So, as I already showed uh, in these two, two microstructure, uh, because of the highly oxidizing uh, nature of these aluminum and silicon, uh, the both elements form uh, um, oxides, uh, oxide inclusions and subsequently they may also attract other aligning elements um, uh, and then leading to the formation of uh, non-metallic inclusions. And uh, the aluminum because of uh, the uh, affinity to delta ferrite uh, during solidification uh, and upon uh, reaching critical limit, it can also stabilize and the fusion boundaries um, upon uh, solidification. So, uh, the delta ferrite uh, uh, you can also very clearly see that uh, the, the stabilization of delta ferrite the fusion boundary. Uh, so, the, the, the having a uh, delta ferrite at the fusion boundary. Um, uh, Bit in the sandwich between the uh, martensitic base microstructure is extremely uh, vulnerable because the delta ferrite is uh, considered uh, softer than the adjoining the matrix which is fully martensitic in this case. And if you have a uh, soft delta ferrite region uh, in between uh, 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 martensitic uh, microstructure, so obviously when you are loading this structure, either in tensile or shear load, your load will be, uh, strain will be partitioning uh, to the fusion boundary and you expect an uh, and a failure of the fusion boundary when you are uh, loading. So, uh, so far what we have seen in, uh, here in this um, uh, classes, so we looked at uh, 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 the welding metallurgy, uh, the very basics of uh, welding metallurgy in advanced ice and steels. So, how a typical weld thermal cycle evolved uh, during welding. Uh, so, um, uh, and uh, so uh, we will also look at uh, the, th the chemistries of trip steel and the, uh, uh, the addition of uh, silicon aluminum is um, it's very needed to stabilize it in last night, uh, but when you have an uh, uh, silicon uh, and aluminum uh, present in the uh, well pool uh, because of the highly oxidizing nature of these elements and you may form a uh, inclusion, uh, non-metallic inclusions uh, and uh, uh, the partitioning behavior of aluminum. Uh, to the solidifying phase can stabilize uh, the unwarranted uh, phases at the, at the fusion boundaries. Uh, so, we look at in detail uh, the role of these aligning elements uh, on the evolution of microstructure and how uh, uh, the well thermal cycle uh, can influence the microstructure evolution with the presence of these aligning elements in uh, subsequent uh, uh, lectures. Thank you.